Hey class, I am coming to you on, uh, this is, oh, why do I have two Mondays? I should say Tuesday. I'm going to fix that real quick. Okay, on Tuesday, I'm doing the factor the GCF in of the terms. So um, I'm on the next page in your journal. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Okay, so greatest common factor. That is the greatest factor that divides into two numbers, or the greatest factor of two numbers. So first thing you do is you're going to list the factors, not prime factors. You can, but the way I'm going to teach it is list all the factors of each number, okay? Find the largest factor that is on both lists. So for GCF of 18 and 24, we're going to list 18 and 24, and then list all the numbers that factor into 18. So for 18, the factors are, well, we know one for sure. It's even, so two. Three will go in because three times 18, I mean, three times six is 18. Um, four will not go in, five will not go in, six will, and then nine will. And then we have 18. So those are all the factors of 18. Then we list all the factors of 24. One will go in, and then two, because two times 12. Three, three times eight, four times six. Five will not go in. Six will go in, because we already said six times four. Six times four, and then eight times three, so eight's the next one. Two times 12, and one times 24. So you can kind of think of those pairs. One times 24, two times 12, three times eight, four times six. So then we look for the number that's on both lists. It's the largest. So um, let's see. One, two, three. Um, oh, six. These are matches, these are matches, these are matches, but this is the greatest. So our GCF is six. That's the largest number that will go into both. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have 16 and 44. So 16, we know one, one times 16, two, two times eight. Three does not go in, four does, five, no. Six, no, four times four is 16. And then eight times two. And then one times 16. And 44, one will go in. Two will go in because it's even. Three will not. Four will. Five, six. So four times 11 is 44 and two times 22. And one times 44. So our greatest, we have these are same, but our greatest is four, G, C, F equals four. And I can also show you that on the calculator. So if you have your calculator out, um, the way we can find our GCF is you can go to math, number, and we want to find GCD. Um, GCF and GCD, greatest common divisor, greatest common factor, so if you want to round to the side calculator, we are going to go to math. So it was right here, math, and then go over to number, and then go down to number nine, which is GCD. Oh, I did it. Okay. And then you put in the two numbers. So let's say on this one, we would, so for the first example, we would put 18 and put a comma between them, 24. Close the parentheses. So example one, we do GCD, parentheses, 18, comma, 24, enter. And that's your GCD, GCF. Okay, we can do it again, go to math, and we'll do it for example two. GCD of 16 and 44. Okay, so number for the 9, 16, comma, 44. It's 4, and that's what we got here. So we did good. 
So you can always check it with your calculator. If you feel like you can do it without the calculator, then go ahead and do that either way is fine. All right. So the next part is find the GCS, GCF with variables. What is the GCF of X and X squared? And what you want to do here is the GCF is we'll go into both. So when we have X, the only factors of X are X because we're just talking about variables. And then X squared is X times X, right? So our GCF is just X. An easier way to look at this is you are just going to choose your long, uh, your lowest variable uh, exponent. So let's say we do d cubed. I'm spelling like d cubed. D cubed. Uh, d cubed is d times d times d. D squared is d times d. So what is our, uh, well, it's this, which this is actually d squared, right? And this is actually d squared. So we could actually write this as d squared times d, and this one just as d squared. So our GCF is d squared. So what you want to do with variables is you want to do the smallest, exponent. That's what you always want to choose as your uh, GCF, your variable with the smallest exponent. And right now we're just working with one variable and that variable is just X or D, it's just one letter. All right, so let's look at our four examples. We are going to look at monomials now. Um, find the GCF of each example so we have the GCF of this and this, um, and then we'll do each one of these examples. So if you want to write those down and uh, turn it back on, you can do that. Okay, so we would do 6x squared and 2x cubed. Hey, remember with the variables, we're just looking at your lowest. So our GCF is going to include the lowest variable. Our lowest variable is x squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. I'm leaving space for the number. So now just look at the numbers. Um, six, you have one, two, three, and six. Two, you just have one and two. So two is our um, GCF. So our GCF is two X squared. And number two, we have four X squared and 24 X cubed. So whenever I do my GCF, I'm not going to write the whole term. I'm only going to look at the numbers because with the variables, we're picking the smallest exponent. So our smallest exponent is at x squared. I'm going to leave a space and then put x squared. Then I'm going to put 4 and 24. Let me move this up. Um, so for 4, we know it's 1, 2, and 4. It's 1 times 4, 2 times 2. For 24, we are going to do 1, 2, 3, we did this earlier, um, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 25. Did I miss any? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 2, 3. Okay, so we're going to look at our factors and look at the greatest one. So our greatest one is four. So we put that in front of our variable with the, lo the lowest exponent. So it's four X squared. Okay. Example three, we have eight Y cubed and 12 Y. So we know that our GCF is going to have our lowest X uh, variable, which is Y. And then we want to look at eight and 12. So eight is one. 1 times 8, 2 times 4, and 1 times 8. 12 is 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and 12. Oh, I forgot my 6. Oops. Oh, okay, there we go. So then we look and see that these are the same, but our, our greatest one is 4, so 4y.
or while is the divisor for both of those. Okay, let's do 14z and 21z squared. So um, we know that we're going to pick our lowest variable exponent. Lowest variable, lowest exponent of a variable. So that's z. And then we have 14 and 21. So we know 14 is 1 times 14, 2 times 7, and that's it. There we go. And then 21 is 1 times 21, 3 times 7, and 21. So 7 is our only um, greatest common factor, or is our greatest common factor. So 7z. Okay, so that's our GCF. All right, so let's keep on moving. So more on the GCF. We're going to factor. Um, whenever I say factor, that means undo your multiplication um, using the GCF. Okay, so I already have my notes written out, so if you want to pause it and write it down, you can, and then unpause it. All right, so just to help us remember with multiplication so that we know how to undo it, let's look at three parentheses, x plus one. So remember with this, we're multiplying three times x and three times one. If you want to look at it like this, you know that three times x is three x, three times one is three. So that's 3x plus 3. Oh, I'm mistaken. Sorry. I meant to put 3 here because I'm trying to go along with this. So fix that. You know me and whiteout. I had to go up to the school to get some whiteout earlier this week. Because you know I make mistakes. Aliyah, well, yeah, you... you Sometimes let me know about my mistakes. Oh, we'll get through this, right? I shouldn't have y'all in class to tell me about my mistakes. That's the problem. We can't fix them right then. Nobody's here checking my mistakes. All right, so 3x plus 3. So we want to know what our GCF is on the right in pink. Our GCF is first, and that's what we're going to factor out. So GCF of 3x and 3 is just... Three. That is the only thing that goes into both. And this one has x, but this one doesn't, so we can't factor anything in. So we are basically undoing the multiplication. So that means I'm going to have a 3 on the outside, parentheses. There's two terms here, so there's going to be two terms on the inside. So now I divide these. 3x divided by 3 is just x. And then 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, so plus 1. So factoring this 3x plus 3, I get 3 parentheses x plus 1. Whenever you put these in on IXL, make sure that you are um, not putting any spaces, no spaces at all. Same thing for whenever I give you all an assignment um, and you have to type the answer in, no spaces. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's find our GCF first. Uh, 50 and 15. So 50 and 15. Um, so you're have, going to have to find that. If you want to use a calculator, you can do that. So go here, go to math, num, down to 9. And then we're going to do 50, comma, 15. We get 5. So 5 is our GCF. So that means I'm going to put a 5 here, parentheses. There's going to be two terms here, here, because there's two terms here. So 50 divided by 5 is 10. And then you have x. x is not divided at all. And then 15 divided by 5 is 3. See, we're undoing it, so we're having to divide these. And we know there's a positive there. And then you can double-check your work by doing 5 times 10x is 50x. 5 times 3 is 15. So that shows that you did it right. Okay, next one. 16x squared plus 4. So we want the GCF of 16 and 4. We did that one earlier, but if you need to do it in the calculator, we know that that is 4. 
And then we also need to look, now we have an x squared and an x. So we take the smallest one, the smallest one is x. So we have 4x on the outside. And then we need to divide these in order to find out what terms go on the inside. Remember, two terms on the original, you have two terms on the inside. So we have 16 divided by 4 is 4. That would make 4 times 4 is 16. x squared divided by x really means just I'm subtracting those. So that has to be an x. So 4x times 4x is 16x squared. And then 4x, what's going to go in this spot? If I have 4x and then divided by 4x, I'm just going to get 1, so plus 1. Okay, the next one, 3x cubed minus 12x squared. So we need to find the GCF of 3 and 12. Well, the only factors are 3 or 1 and 3. We know 3 will go into 12, so it's 3. But then we find the lowest uh, variable exponent, so the x squared. So 3x squared. So now we need to find what's inside. So 3x cubed divided by 3x squared. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. x cubed divided by x squared. You subtract those x minus, I mean, 3 minus 2 is 1, so x to the first, or just x. And then, see how there's a minus here? There's no other minus, so we know that that's going to be minus. And then 12 divided by 3 would be 4. x squared divided by x squared is just 1, so it's just 4. I'm going to rewrite this. Yeah minus 4. So I don't have that 1 out front. I don't have a variable of 1 either. Okay, hopefully you're getting this. So I'm going to give you four problems to try. So go ahead and write these four. Okay, write those four down and pause it and then come back to it. Okay, so hopefully now you've done it because you're playing it now. So let's check your answers. So if I have 7x squared and 14x, I know that my GCF is 7. And then I'll take my lowest variable exponent, so x. So 7x is on the outside. And then I divide these, and I get x. And then 14x and 7x, so that'd be plus 2. So you can double check your work by doing 7x times x, 7x squared. 7x times 2 is 14x. Okay, next one, GCF of 2 and 12. We know that would be 2. Then you take your lowest variable exponent. So that's x, so 2x, no exponent there. So 2x goes on the outside. 2x squared and divided by 2x is just an x negative or minus, since there's no other minuses, so 12 divided by 2 is 6, x divided by x, that's it. Okay, we're almost done. All right, 14 and 42, so GCF. Did you find that one, hopefully? Because they're bigger, and I feel like you'll want to do the calculator. I'm going to go ahead and do the calculator. 14 comma... 42. Guess what? It's 14. All right, so 14. And then we take our lowest, which would just be x. So 14x, parentheses. Um, 14x squared divided by 14x is just x. Minus, so 42 divided by 14. 42 divided by 14. That's 3. So minus 3. So if you were to multiply these out, it would be 14x times x is 14x squared. 14x times a negative 3 is a negative 42x. Hopefully you're following. All right, the next one, 30x minus 3. So you want your GCF of 30 and 10. Did I say 3? I don't know what it's like. 30x minus 10. So GCF of 30 and 10. 
would be 10. And only one of them has a variable. So we're just going to put 10. And this would be 30 divided by 10 is 3. There's no x's here, so we keep it here. And then minus 10, 10 divided by 10, so that'd be a minus 1 there. All right, hopefully uh, you're understanding all this and you're ready to move on to the IXL practice. Um, Y'all go ahead and have a great day. Oh, one thing. With IXL, what I do is the IXL for the entire week, so this is week four, I average those IXL um, grades together, and that's the grade that goes in the grade book. Just so you know. Same thing with the bell ringers. I average those bell ringers together. All right. Y'all have a great day, and I will see you next time.